Today, we're going to be talking about TikTok. Nothing more exciting than an old man talking about social media. Here we go. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing out there? I hope you've been doing well. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Miles. I do music stuff. And what we're going to be talking about today is the topic of social media, most specifically the platform of TikTok. I should apologize because it's been a little while since I've put out anything of real substance on here. I, I've been doing a bunch of reels and all that stuff, but that's not really the kind of content that I want to be putting out into the world on a regular. And I've been busy with a lot of stuff that's going to be the topic of discussion in future videos. So, you know, be sure to stick around for that. I promise it's coming soon. Like, it's probably hard to tell right now, but, like, everything is in absolute disarray <laughs> down here right now. So, yeah, I've been busy. I need to clean. It's giving me anxiety, but it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get through all of this. Recently, I came across a video on TikTok from the artist Halsey where they were talking about how they have a new single they want to put out and they're really excited about it, but the record label they're on is not allowing them to put it out there until they're able to put together some sort of TikTok video that will make into a viral moment on the social media platform and how it's just really frustrating because as an artist, they've been working really hard to get to this point in their career and they feel like they shouldn't be obligated to do things in this sort of manner. And so in response to that, there's been a number of people that have been asking if it's actually a real thing that record labels are forcing their artists, forcing, to have to go and do these things on social media in order to really boost the numbers and sales of their records and singles and streams and all of those things that come along with releasing new music. And the answer to that is yes. It's always been yes. Yeah, it's pretty much always been a thing. For the longest time, a record label that has an artist that's getting ready to release new music, they want to find a way of building up some sort of momentum leading up to the release of that new music just to kind of boost sales and bring more attention to it overall. Previously, the way this was done was with having artists record radio spots where it would be like a 30 second promo talking about who the artist is, the new music they have coming out, mentioning what radio station you're listening to, and then following that with a playing of like a hit single from that artist on that radio station. It worked out really well because it got people familiar with the artist. It let them know they have something new coming out. And then you play something that's already established as a single to basically associate with that promo so that the person says, oh, that's who that is, if they don't know already. But we're not dealing with radio anymore because no one listens to the radio. Everyone has social media. And so what is king is going to a platform that utilizes video in short form and gets straight to the point and is a good way to convey a point get something out there to the consumer and let them know that um, there's something that they're interested in that's coming soon. And one of the best platforms for this sort of thing is TikTok because the way that their algorithm has been set up, although it's not really the same anymore, it's not the same as Instagram where you can be essentially nobody and blow up on there because you have a catchy song and people use it as audio in their videos later on you know, you, you know how TikTok works. And I've seen videos from other artists that are complaining about the same sort of issue that they're having where the label that's representing them wants them to create some sort of viral moment on social media, whether it be on TikTok or on Instagram or elsewhere. So anyone that's surprised by this news from this video from Halsey, I think they just haven't been paying attention. And some might wonder where the origins of TikTok being sort of like home base for either an established artist or even in just like an up and coming artist to go on there, make a video that's talking about some new music they have coming out and it flourishing in terms of promotion just through the algorithm that exists on TikTok. And in my opinion, if I had to really think about who really made the most of that sort of promotional style and made TikTok sort of the go-to place in that regard, I'd probably have to look at someone like Lil Nas X. I remember before his album came out, he was going on and posting a number of videos where he wasn't necessarily doing a lot. Maybe he was dancing, maybe he was just kind of like making a funny face at the camera. 
and there would be uh, a list of captions on the screen, something about like new music coming or even something unrelated to it. And in the background, the audio on the video was actually a song from the upcoming album. Which in itself is already good because he's a well-established artist. People know who he is because of Old Town Road. Sure, fine. But then he took it a step further. Then he started having videos where he is faux pregnant with a huge belly. And his belly supposedly is where his new record is. And the day that the baby's due is the actual release date of the album. But there was such a response from these videos that to the point where it was being shared everywhere else, like literally everywhere else, people were reacting to it. People were making YouTube videos about it, reacting to reactions, you know, the feedback loop that we exist in as content creators. And because of all the commentary and probably controversy that stirred around all this stuff that he was posting online, I'd imagine that it definitely drew more attention to the record prior to it being released. And then henceforth, boosting the number of sales and streams and all of that when it finally was presented to the public. But let's get back to the topic in regards to the video that Halsey made as well as other artists that have made this whole scenario be presented almost as though they're being forced into like a pseudo hostage situation where they're forced to be making content they don't really want to be making. We established that if you're an artist that's on a label of any sort, whether they be a major or a smaller label, they're probably going to want you to do this sort of thing anyway because they want money. They want more money. They want more streams. More streams means more money. It all roots back to that. So, yes, confirmed it's happening. As far as whether or not it's unfair for the labels to be forcing artists to be doing this sort of promotion for themselves, I don't think it's unfair. As someone who releases his own original music on his own with no backing from a label and still has to go to his regular job and do all the things that artists are expected to do to promote themselves and gain more attention towards themselves and new material they have coming out, if you don't have to worry about going to a job aside from just showing up to be an artist and do the things that come along with that and you're already well established, I don't know. I don't know how upset I can really be. And I think it's just a sign of where we are as a society because it used to be that you would listen to the radio. The radio would have a set list of songs they would play through for an hour, commercial break, go to the next radio show, or they literally play the same set of songs again in the next hour um, in between some sort of extended dialogue they have between sessions of music. And if you weren't on the radio, you had a music video that was on MTV or you were being interviewed on MTV too. Somehow you were getting your foot in the door that way and then it was just on a constant loop. Even if someone missed your spot on MTV earlier in the day, they'd probably catch you later on in the evening when they played the same series of videos over again. And I'm speaking specifically of established artists because back then there was no such thing as DistroKid and self-distribution of any sort where you could get your music up on iTunes or anything like that. The only thing that you had available much later on were platforms like Napster and LimeWire. And even that avenue wasn't necessarily going to be something lucrative to you as an artist because number one, no one knows who you are. If you don't have a video on MTV or a song on the radio, they're not searching for your song on Napster. Granted, you could take the Soldier Boy route and label your music as another established artist so that when someone goes to download it, they end up getting your song. And lots of artists ended up doing that. But if you weren't an already established artist with representation from a major label that's putting your face out there on literal TV commercials and in music videos and all these other things, you weren't getting out there. So promoting yourself was something that you had to do by like handing out flyers or standing out in Times Square and handing out CDs to people. But now where we are currently in 2022, there's more accessibility to promote yourself with cool special effects in a video that you can record from your phone. So it's not that bad. And some might argue that it's taking away from the creative process of writing new material, which yes, absolutely. But it comes with the territory. Anyone out there with a regular nine to five job that's also creating music when they get out of work and after they're done taking care of their responsibilities for their family, maybe they have kids, 
of whatever the situation may be, they could also argue that that stuff takes away from the creative process as well, but also needs to be done. And while it probably sounds like I'm coming off as a bit of a, like, Rick Beato type, and I'm just like, you damn kids, back in my day, things were so much harder. We had to record the tape. Really, things aren't that bad. It, it could be a lot more work involved when it comes to promoting the music that you have coming out and maintaining some sort of attention towards you as an artist. And especially if you're an artist such as Halsey, who already has attention being drawn their way already. I certainly can relate to the idea of it being frustrating trying to utilize a social media platform that you may not completely understand how to be successful utilizing in your promotion. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing with TikTok, especially now that the algorithm is different than what it was when I first got the app on my phone. I, I've, I've grown really frustrated with it. Even when I first downloaded TikTok to my phone, I, I downloaded it on a whim. I forgot that I had it on there. Um, but when I first downloaded it, I think I uploaded a video that I had already posted to Instagram. And um, I never checked up on it to see how it was doing or anything like that because I just kind of didn't care. And then a couple months later, I go back and it's got thousands of views. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I was drawn to the idea that maybe there was something there that I should be utilizing in that moment. But I think everyone kind of goes through that initial instance on social media where they have a post or a video that gains a lot of attention from a bunch of people abruptly. And you're like, ooh, how do I do that again? And then it doesn't happen the next time you try to post something. And so you say, all right, whatever, forget it. And it seems that now, in order to garner an audience on a platform like TikTok, the only way to really be successful with that is to post a series of videos, basically like a couple a day, like three TikTok videos a day in some cases. And then in addition to that, also hosting live streams on there. And it can get discouraging. I'll be swiping through TikTok and I'll see that there's bands now that are hosting, I guess, either rehearsal or they're doing like an at-home performance. Full band on a live stream on TikTok. And knowing just a little bit of what kind of process goes into just syncing up the audio and video in that capacity so that you can do that, that's frustrating in itself. And also keep in mind that if you're not already well established as an artist, you're doing all this stuff for free. Unless you have a video that really pops off immediately and you're in the TikTok partnership program and you have all these other things going on where people are buying your merch and all this stuff, you're doing a lot of things. You're putting a lot of effort forward for very little return. And not everyone has the time to dedicate to that unless they like make time. And that's when you start getting into the whole like hustle and grind uh, thing. And that's not, it's not something that can be functional long term. So as far as the case for Halsey being in a position where I feel sympathetic for, I kind of don't. I think that it could be a lot worse. And this is the same thing that I've seen with other artists as well outside of TikTok. Even Logic, I saw that he had posted a video where he was complaining that his label wasn't doing right by him. And I think if you're an artist that's signing to a major label, you should have a good idea of what you're getting yourself signed up for with that major label before you sign a contract. And we're talking about artists that have lawyers and can afford to have representation of that sort. Not everyone has that, and that's how you see smaller artists getting wrapped up in 360 deals and things of that nature. Yeah, overall, I just think that this is just where we are at this point. This is just how music is promoted now, and either you're okay with that, or you're not. And if you're in a position where you can get by without promoting yourself on social media platforms such as TikTok, good on you. But the rest of us, you're probably going to have to do something on TikTok that's going to really garner some attention your way. Another prime example of this sort of thing is that female artist that had that clip that everyone was reposting and doing duets with, where she sings the first part of her song. It's like, please don't text me when you're drunk. You know, that whole thing, catchy tune. And, you know, that hook right there in that line, it's great. It's great. 
And so I imagine because of that little snippet and allowing people to also add their own material to it and make it more of a communicative thing that garnered a lot more attention towards that artist, that song, their music, everything in general. We as a society kind of have an expectation where we want to be able to interact with the artists that we listen to and support. And whether it be commenting on posts that they put up on social media, let's say Instagram, Facebook, whatever, or duetting their videos on TikTok, that everyone wants to have a closer relationship with these artists. And part of building that relationship is going out there and putting out materials that make the consumers of your music, of your art, feel connected to you. If you see me making faces or like tightening up and doing things like that, it's because my acid reflux is out of control right now. But anyway, I think that it's just something that as an artist you have to adapt to. This exists in so many other instances as far as being a musician, being a content creator, all these things that everyone, seemingly everyone, is trying to do to some degree. And yeah, you just gotta deal with it. The same can be said for musicians that are trying to garner an audience on YouTube. If you're trying to do something in terms of music education, and let's say you're trying to make a video where uh, you're talking about what makes a song great, and you're not able to profit off it because it's someone else's actual song, and you're just like picking it apart and explaining how chords work, um, maybe that's not the best place to be pouting about that, but may may maybe that's another video all entirely. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I think that if you're going to be committing yourself to trying to embark on building up an audience of people that are supporting your creative endeavors, you have to be ready to kind of tread a different path, either completely unique to everyone else around you, or to literally just do what everyone else is doing because you see that's how it's being done. In the era of Dire Straits, it was playing your guitar on the MTV, and now it is making a short 30 second clip on TikTok. That's it. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's all I got in regards to this topic. It's been brought to my attention on a couple different occasions now, and so I figured it's about time I made a video, and what better video to come back with than one on this topic of discussion. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think about what I think. So let's do that social media thing where I tell you to put your opinion down in the comments so that it boosts the uh, visibility of my video. And we get into an argument in the comments and further boost the visibility of this video. You know, it'll be great. Engagement, all that stuff. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But yeah, that's all I got for you for now. I will see you in the next one. Keep playing. Peace.